Hello and welcome to GKL Electric's review of the new Tesla Model 3. Obviously everything's very aerodynamic, including the door handles. They don't pop out like you'd find on the Model S and Model X. You have to push the thumb in to pull. Hidden here is the charging point. You just touch the bottom there and it pops out. You can also activate it from inside the car as well. The boot is fairly conventional. There's a rubber switch just underneath the Tesla symbol that you just pull and lift up. Then inside, quite a long boot and a decent opening for a saloon opening. And under here are your charging cables. One type two charging cable. And then in the pack, you also get adapters for a three pin plug as well. Now to get in the car, you either use your app on your phone or it does come with a card. And you tap the card on the pillar here. That opens the car. As soon as you get in, the car is live and ready to, ready to drive. Now, to get into the, what's called the front, or the storage compartment in the front of the car, um, you push on the screen, and that pops the front. So just lifted, it's on hydraulic rams, so no need for any sticks. Washer fluid, bottle just out at the top with the symbol on, and then you've got a storage compartment here to anything you want in. Currently comes with the uh, first aid kit and safety kit but a good a good size of storage in the front as well as the back. Now the wheels on our demonstrator are actually a 19 inch option wheel. You can have an 18 inch wheel that comes with aerodynamic hubcaps that again aid the efficiency and if you go for a performance model then you get a 20 inch wheel option. This car is a dual motor version which Essentially, it means exactly that. It has twin electric motors, one on the front axle, one on the rear axle, giving it all-wheel drive. This is available in both the long-range and the long-range performance models. Now, in terms of options, there aren't many. Um, the car comes really well equipped anyway, so the only options you have are the colour, one choice on the interior, and whether you want full automated driving or stick with the autopilot that the vehicle comes with anyway. Every car comes with a full uh, panoramic roof, which is tinted and heat reflective as well. The steering wheel buttons can also do adjustments with the car. So if you go to your quick controls and adjustments, mirrors, you use these to adjust, adjust your mirrors or you can use it to actually adjust your steering wheel so up and down and in in standard and factory right. configuration the left hand side does the volume for your music or your telephone and the left and right basically forwards the track or reverses the track on the right hand side the click left or click right will tell you you can dictate how far you want to be in front of or someone to be in front of you with the autopilot. So to drive, uh, very similar to the Mercedes automatic, you just pull the stick down to drive. So the air conditioning on this is, you tap the fan, brings up this beautiful display, and then to adjust the airflow, you can see here, you just trace your finger to the direction that you want the air to flow on both sides. And then everything else aside from that is fairly conventional. Fan speed, auto, temperature. How does the car handle well it it does function really well um obviously the 
everyone's talked about the centre of gravity being lower because of the batteries. Um, so the whole car is weighted correctly for, for handling. The option wheels on this car, I think, has made it probably a bit harder than it will normally be um, on the standard on the standard wheels. But it's not an uncomfortable ride. So you'll see as we go past cars, they will they come up on the screen, and this will, like I say, eventually this will form the basis after a software update of automated driving. Now, in terms of ownership and and using usability you know the car does start from with the grant under £40,000 which brings it right into the realms of C-Class Mercedes 3 Series BMW and in terms of leasing that makes it a very strong proposition compared to those cars also particularly when you take into account the amount of money saved on fuel compared to electricity and the amount of performance you get out of this kind of car Plus it also safeguards you for the future if there are any updates on future cars you can just change your car after three or four years and get into the next best thing. So the navigation system is a Google map system, gives you live traffic as you're driving, same as you, as you get on Google Maps, so that's live information from other road users as they're moving. So it's probably one of the most accurate uh, traffic navigation systems you can get. Now in terms of speed, this is an incredibly quick car, off the mark, and for overtaking, this car does it brilliantly. adjust how the steering feels. Go into your car menu, driving, and you've got three modes. Comfort, standard and sport. We're currently in comfort mode which gives you a lighter feel. You can go all the way up to sport where it does and it is instantly, instantly weights the steering for more dynamic driving. Now obviously like every electric car uh, this has regenerative braking. There's two versions you can do either standard which we're in now or low which kind of makes it easier to modulate the power but won't give you as much back so if we leave it in standard and the scale is here just un just underneath the speed so as I accelerate you'll see a black line and then as I lift off you'll see the green line and the green line is the region how much regeneration it's applying whilst you're slowing down to put power back into the battery pack that when you're fully charged is depleted because it can't regenerate so much into a fully charged battery as it can a half charged or a three-quarter charged battery so without the app then you use your your card now this doesn't necessarily have to be here um, once you get into the car it can stay in your pocket there are occasions where if the car thinks that you've opened it and not done much with it and is trying to stop someone else driving it away it will ask you to tap this just under here just to allow you to start and drive the car center console I think is very basic for a car of this value I know we're talking about something completely different and I know the money's gone into the drivetrain and the battery technology and everything else but still we are talking about just gloss black fittings, um, a big bin, storage bin, a mat which grips your phone but it's not particularly anything. Um, these little points here, the idea is that you feed your uh, charger cable through here and then stick it up and then pop the mat back in so that your cable's sticking out um, but it, it doesn't hold it anywhere so particularly with a car of this kind of acceleration it's not that well thought out um, as to the cup holders if you've just got a, a regular size cup or if you've got a can or if you've got a bottle again a car with this acceleration you'd think it'd have something a bit more substantial than just a gap the centre armrest pops up very ordinarily with a tray inside. 
and a storage bin and a, a 12 volt charger. Again, nothing really special, just pretty standard really. So it's got a, it's got parking sensors and reverse camera. Uh, as soon as you put it into reverse, that comes up. That gives you your, your camera and it will also give you obstacle avoidance. So, and what it does do, if I back into this hedge, very gently, it will start telling me that there's something there. It also gives the measurement. So we'll also tell you exactly how far you wait away from something else. Even to open the glove box in this car is something a bit special. You go to your main car screen, glove box, touch, opens the glove box. Won't close it for you, you've got to do that yourself. Engage the uh, cruise control. You just use your gear stick that's here, and you pull it down past the drive position. Um, and then to, to disengage it, you just push the stick back up to drive. It automatically set to your speed limit wherever you are. Um, you can change it manually, but that's what it will do on its own. And this auto adaptive cruise, other people call it auto cruise, um, it will bring you to a complete stop and start again. At the charge station, we'll open it from the inside, why not? Uh, open charge port. So you can see it now filling up 10 kilowatt so this should get better and better, 22 kilowatt rate. It's gonna get quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. Here it goes, all the way up to, what we're we gonna get to? 117 kilowatts, which is brilliant. So we've been gone, how long have we been gone? Half an hour. Half an hour? So we've done the Starbucks, queued for it, drank it. Um, so we're gonna see where we are with our charger and look at that so the charge rates dropped because what happens is similar to your mobile phone um, it charges quicker in the first half of charging than it does after now this thing will charge completely in 25 minutes um, but we're not gonna bother with that because we've got 256 miles that's all we need and we don't need to spend any more money on it so really good um, so we're going to stop charging more information and business lease rates on this as well as any other vehicle get in touch via the website or call us and don't forget to like or leave a comment below